Welcome to Pet Pals. I'm Dee Dee and this is Randy and barely on camera you can see Kira and we are here at Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center. As always each week we bring you some adoptable animals from the shelter on Rosemont Avenue so that you can see a little bit about what we do and view some of the animals that are in need of a second home and our reason for having uh, Kira bring Reese in is that Reese was given up because he's too afraid of men. And um, we wanted to um, offer him another home and accommodate his fear. But as you can see, he likes Randy petting him and he's taking food from Randy, so he's not that scared. And oftentimes people think that um, animals who are afraid have been mistreated. And while that's absolutely possible, I can tell you that the animals that I've met that have been mistreated, um, which are few and far between, are loving of people, forgiving, robust dogs who get themselves in trouble by doing things like um, untrained dogs do, and not so much dogs that are afraid. Dogs that are afraid are most often lack experience. So. If as a puppy, he was in kind of a sheltered environment where he never saw wheelchairs, he never went in a car, and we don't know this because um, we only know from his former owner that they had him like a normal pet and his um, timidity just didn't resolve with time. So uh, they didn't feel like they could help him. So we want to be able to help him here and also find a home for him where someone will continue with good experiences for him with a variety of people so that he can be a little more brave in the world and um, that'll give him uh, a better outlook and uh, make it possible for him to have a more fulfilling life. Um, we believe him to be part lab and part Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Uh, his curly hair down his back and his coloring is part of that. Um, but we don't always know and you can't tell without a DNA test. So um, he is uh, full grown. This is the size that he's gonna be. And he's a very beautiful dog. He um, just needs somebody who understands that he's scared. Our next guest is Clarabelle. And uh, Clarabelle is a little chihuahua. And uh, she is six years old. And she came to us from a family that uh, felt like they couldn't properly take care of her any longer. Um, she has uh, a skin infection from um, maybe fleas, but our vet will uh, write extensive notes and anyone who's interested in adopting her can view them. As you all know by now, all of the friendly and healthy dogs that come to the animal shelter uh, are going to be adopted. But we're also to help dogs that have um, minor problems like this uh, and offer them for adoption as well. And sometimes it seems when you come to the shelter that we might have all lab mixes or all pit bull type dogs or all chihuahuas and Yorkies. Um, and sometimes it may seem that way from the dogs we select for the show. But I will tell you every Thursday night, I look through all of the dogs that are in the shelter, haven't been on TV before, and uh, don't have uh, adoption interviews pending. And then we bring them on the show for you to meet. And it's strange that some days it does seem like all the dogs that are uh, available for TV are tiny or they're all big or they're all pit bulls. Um, but there's no rhyme or reason to that. It's just that we get um, about uh, 14 dogs a day, I mean 14 animals a day, and half of those, um, uh, more than half of them are cats. Um, but that means that every day the population is changing and we just want to bring you a variety so that you can see what's here and think about coming into the shelter when you want to adopt a pet. And if you don't find the animal of your dreams here, not to forget that we have guinea pigs and rabbits and birds sometimes, that um, we can help you by referring you to rescues in the area. And um, we also, uh, there's a Catoctin Kennel Club in Frederick 
where you can connect with dog breeders. And uh, there are many, many people trying to do this work so that as many animals as need to can get a, a second home. And this little girl is typical of chihuahuas. She trembles. And uh, sometimes people think that that means they're cold or scared. And obviously it can. But chihuahuas tend to tremble because it is rewarded by people picking them up and petting them. And there also may be a genetic um, component to that behavior uh, that uh, they are more prone to do it, and it pays off. So um, if you think that uh, this little dog might uh, make a good match for you or someone that you know, you know what to do. Come by the shelter or share her pet tango profile with uh, people who might be interested. We are back with our next guest, and she looks a little bit like Clarabelle. This is Frankie. And uh, Frankie, wa uh, Frankie was relinquished to the shelter because um, her owner has to move in with uh, friends to uh, get some help with her health care. So she wasn't able to bring her dog along because the place where she's moving has a pet limit and that pet limit is already met uh, by the people who are helping her out. So a lot of times people think that when they hear a story that someone gave up their pet um, it was somehow a heartless act, but I can tell you from talking to people who are deciding that the fact that her owner has to move in with someone else to get help is um, a pretty serious matter, and she just wasn't able to accommodate her little dog as well. So uh, since Frankie was previously owned, we have a whole profile on her, her likes and her dislikes. She is a toy fox terrier which is um, about the same size as a chihuahua, um, but a little bit different personality. Chihuahuas tend to want to be held and um, pampered, and fox terriers are more terrier-like. They are more outgoing, they don't mind walking around on the ground, and um, don't have um, as many of the needs as a chihuahua does as far as uh, chihuahuas don't like to be alone or cold or um, they make very good little purse companion dogs, while toy fox terriers um, are more interested in uh, being out and about. Obviously, she's still tiny and she still needs protection due to her size. Um, but as you can see, a little bit of a different kind of dog despite the similar look. Now, both of these dogs are a little bit overweight. I don't know if you noticed it with Clarabelle, but you can see it with this little girl because she's down on the floor. And it's really important for dogs, as it is for people, uh, to keep trim if they can. They don't have the same um, heart disease risks as people do from being overweight, but they have, you know, joint problems and um, they can become diabetic. So it is really important that you think about how tiny she is. It'd be really easy to overfeed her because you don't realize what a small amount of food she needs for a meal. And your vet can help you with uh, weight check-ins. And um, if, like me, you want to get on a program of getting yourself back in shape, maybe this little girl could come along and do it with you. No more treats, girl. Our next guest is Scrappy. And uh, Scrappy is another small dog, tricolored. And uh, he is a Jack Russell Terrier, um, which is also called Parsons Russell Terrier. Oh, and this boy. coat is called a broken coat. It's wiry. And uh, he, is, he came to us as a stray. And we think he's about 18 months old. And part of adoption at the animal shelter includes neutering, microchipping, started on vaccinations, a coupon for your rabies shot if we can't verify that they've already had one. And in the case of strays, we always send you with um, the uh, plan to get a rabies shot from your vet. And sometimes people ask that, hi, sometimes people ask um, about that initial vet visit. Do I really have to take him to the vet if your vet just got done seeing him and giving him shots and deworming him and treating him for fleas and all the stuff that we do? Yes, you do. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Number one, when you have a pet at home, you always wanna have a good relationship with a local vet in case of emergency. For example, if uh, you call a vet that you've never gone to before at 4.30 on a Friday night and say, hey, my dog that you've never seen is acting strangely, can I bring him by real quick? 
um, the answer is going to be no. They have clients they have to serve. They have um, staff that has things to do after they close. So if they don't know you, they're not going to take on a new project very late in the day. However, if you uh, have a relationship with a vet, then it's very likely that they're going to say, oh yeah, we know Scrappy, come on over, we'll take a look at him for you. So you definitely want the relationship with the vet for that reason. The second reason you want to do it is because <clears throat> with uh, the vets that we have here, examine the dogs based on any symptoms they have, they do a thorough checkup, they um, uh, start them on their shots and deworm them, but you're going to want to have your vet see a baseline, how your dog is when he's fine, so that if six months from now he's acting differently, has gained weight, lost weight, then you have your vet's ability to examine him over time. Very valuable for preventive medicine. The other thing that you're going to need right away when you take home a dog from the shelter in addition to the rabies shot is information. Your veterinarian is going to talk to you about how to prevent fleas, how to prevent heartworms, how to uh, take care of dental care needs, and all kinds of things that you're going to want to know to budget. What are the things that your dog needs in the year? Why wait until all one visit and then be surprised with a big bill when your veterinary clinic can work with you to plan it over time? Some animal hospitals even have a whole wellness plan where you come in on a regular basis and it's all paid for with one price. So um, yes, absolutely our animals are vet checked, but when you adopt, you still need to take your new pet to your vet um, so that you can start that relationship and give your pet the best care you can. Right, Scrappy? Yeah. Right. We are back with Grace. And um, Grace is, uh, in my view, almost a perfect dog because she is uh, a lab mix. Everyone loves a lab mix. Um, she's beautiful. And uh, she came to us as a stray, so we don't know her story. But she has the perfect pet experience. Uh, we suspect that she's house trained. Um, we can never guarantee that and we will tell you how to introduce her to a new place so you can find out. And um, she doesn't pull on the leash. She doesn't jump on people. She's got a lovely personality. When she came in, her nails were a little long and uh, she let the staff trim them. So this is um, just the type of dog that everyone should consider for a first dog. And the reason I said she's almost perfect is because there are two things people would be concerned about. Number one is her short coat is gonna shed. Very easy to take care of. You just wipe her down with a washcloth uh, every other day or so and you'll be good. But the second reason is because we don't know how old she is, we suspect she's 10 or 11 years old. And that means that as perfect as she is, you're not gonna have a lot of time with her, meaning she's probably not gonna be around for the next 10 years. However, if you have kids that are planning on going away to college, if you um, don't know if you're gonna be taking a new job in five years, then actually that can be a really good thing to get a dog who is already ready to be a family pet and to know that you can provide for her for all the time that she has left to give. Uh, sometimes uh, older dogs wait longer for a home and we're okay with that because they should wait for someone who doesn't adopt them because they feel badly. You should never take on a new family member out of guilt. And it's easy to do that because uh, dogs are so genuine in their expressions and their relationship with people that it's very easy to feel like you should be the one to uh, take every dog home. And believe me, people who work here and volunteer here like Randy know that feeling. We totally understand you're wanting to help and feeling compelled to do something for a beautiful dog like this. But you don't have to feel badly because a friendly, healthy dog like Grace is not gonna run out of time in the shelter. We're gonna make room for her as long as it takes to find her a home. And uh, actually, because she's so calm and sweet, I don't think it's gonna take very long at all. So we're gonna take a short break and uh, give you some county information. And then we'll be back with some adoptable cats at Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center. And I hope you join us. This is a Frederick County special report. The great 
great city of Frederick is one of many facing a grave and dire threat. Golly gee willikers! You said it, mister! Every day the average American generates four and a half pounds of waste. These vast amounts of refuge threaten to clog our waterways, overflow our landfills, and bring harm to our wildlife. Well, what can we do to help reduce our waste? By recycling! Place your recyclables in the bin. Then place on the curb on collection day. It's just that easy. I want to know more. More information is available at www.learnmorerecyclebetter.com. You can make tomorrow a better and cleaner place. are back at Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center with some adoptable cats and as many of you know it is kitten season and that is the time of year when um, mother cats that are not spayed, uh, female cats that are not spayed become mothers and uh, oftentimes people find the mothers and kittens living in the community and bring them in or uh, rescue groups take them in or uh, we have uh, cats dropped off at the shelter who are pregnant, who deliver their kittens in our foster program. So um, it is a busy, busy time of year. And our first guest is sugar or flour. And the reason I say sugar or flour is these two white kittens are so closely um, uh, described that unless you have them both in your hand at the same time, you can't tell which one has more little black hairs on top of her head. So um, sugar and flour could certainly be adopted together, but they don't have to be. A lot of times when people come in and see kittens in a cage together, they feel badly about breaking them up, but uh, nature breaks them up around nine or 10 months by um, giving them the interest in leaving their mothers and finding their own territory. So, when you adopt two kittens, they sometimes don't remain friends for life. Um, but it's a good bet if you know you want to get two. You also might want to consider, if you know you want two cats, adopting Penny and Rambo. Penny and Rambo are, are cats that have been here the longest. They're in the kitty cabana. And while they did not come in together, they met here and have formed this terrific friendship. Um, so uh, we would love for them to be able to go to a new home together if you've thought about getting two. If you are interested in kittens, well then by all means, we can help you out. We have many and uh, new ones arriving every day and uh, flour and sugar are just examples of that. We are back with candy corn and uh, candy corn is one of many kittens here in the shelter and you can see her name is quite suitable for the season, for her coloring. Um, but we were just talking about the naming of kittens and it can be a challenge. In between April and October, we get over a thousand kittens at Frederick County Animal Control. And our foster homes are very uh, commonly the ones who are charged with naming the kittens. So they do a great job of theme naming litters and picking famous characters to name their kittens after. But at some point, we have had to think up 11 unique names. I mean, a thousand unique names. So, um, or 1100 is what I was gonna say. But it can be, um, it can cause repeats, which we're about to show you in, in just a moment. So candy corn, in keeping with a Halloween theme and her color, is available for adoption. What you should think about if you're gonna get a kitten is supervision. Kittens need a lot of supervision. We recommend putting them in the bathroom for a week, but you need to be able to go in there and play with them a lot so that they'll be social and feel safe and entertained. But once you let them out, there is some diligence on your part that's required to keep them from doing something crazy and also to teach them what behavior you expect in your home. And uh, once you get through that stage, you're gonna end up with a lovely companion. But doing the work is pretty important and you have to know that you're ready. Sometimes people think, oh, the kids will do it. No, they won't. So 
one of the things you need to think about if you're going to get um, a pet is that it has to be your pet first. By all means, you should encourage your kids to help and they get a lot out of it uh, responsibility-wise and experience-wise. But since children are forgetful, we always recommend that they not be set up to lose their pet because they were irresponsible. It's not a good way to teach them to strive for better responsibility in the future because for kids, the loss of a pet can be pretty traumatic um, and they have a hard time understanding the uh, lines between an animal family member and a human family member. And what I mean by that is if you are teaching them that should the pet become a burden, the pet can go to the shelter. Um, it doesn't set a good example for the standards of uh, what you'll do for family members to keep them. So mixed messages uh, to the kids we don't want. And uh, certainly they should and can help with the um, care of a pet. You just need to make sure that you know in the end the responsibility is yours or perhaps wait until they get their own apartment and let them get their own pet and let them have their own consequences. We are back with Kit Kat. Kit Kat is Candy Corn's sister and um, these kittens are um, about two months old which I didn't say before. Uh, they have to weigh between, um, as, well they have to weigh more than three pounds for surgery and um, we should talk about that. Uh, so pediatric spaying and neutering. Spaying and neutering kittens when they're tiny like this uh, has been done for um, about 20 years, but more commonly 10. Uh, I would say everybody's doing it. And we have found that the outcomes for the cats are very similar, whether they're spayed very young or not. And our reason for doing it is because um, it is a very important step towards reducing the number of kittens we get every year. And since 80 to 90 percent of pet cats are already spayed and neutered, then where are all these cats coming from? They're coming from the 10 to 20 percent of cats that are owned that aren't spayed or neutered or from cats that aren't owned at all. So we have to find ways to reduce the number of kittens coming into the shelter every year so that we can eventually, I mean, it would be a great goal to not even need an animal shelter because all of the dogs and cats that are born are born on purpose and people want them. And uh, then tax dollars won't have to be spent making sure that these little guys don't become a nuisance or victims of cruelty or neglect just simply by not having a home. So. Um, spaying and neutering when they're quite young has many, many advantages which shelters um, promote. But you can also, if you get a cat through another source, talk to your vet about the best thing to do for your individual cat. Spaying and neutering before adoption is absolutely the best thing to do for the shelter and the most responsible thing to do for our budget so that we can reduce the number of kittens that are born um, in Frederick County so that we will not next year, hopefully, get uh, over a thousand kittens that need to have homes. If you think that these little kittens are uh, gonna make a good addition to your family, then come by and meet them. See if you're ready for a kitten, talk to us. But it also helps us out, as you all know, if you uh, go to our Facebook page and find their links and share them, or go to Pet Tango and uh, find the profiles on the animals and share those any way you can, social media, or print them and post them somewhere publicly. Are you gonna sit on my lap? And we are back with Kit Kat number two. This Kit Kat is a male kitten, a little older, and uh, he came to us from some people who weren't able to keep him, and they also gave us a little um, cat tree for him. So if you adopt this Kit Kat, you'll get the little piece of cat furniture, and it's not often that a cat comes to live at your house and brings his furniture to move in. So um, they all have their different stories, and whenever people uh, relinquish a pet, along with supplies for the pet, we pass those on to you. Um, and it can be a help. I mean, sometimes it's stuff you wouldn't want anyway, but I can tell you his cat tree is cute. 
It's um, a little short chocolate brown uh, carpeted nest with a scratching post and some toys hanging from it. So I think he'll be um, happy to have that to take along. And because we recommend you keeping them in the bathroom for a week, it is a, since it's small, it'll fit right in there with him and um, give him something to do while uh, you are going about your business. A lot of times when people are deciding on a pet, since we show you dogs and cats every week, uh, if we have them as well as some other small animals, when people are deciding on a pet, they often choose more based on what kind of animal they think is cute or what kind of animal they imagine will fit into their lifestyle. So I encourage you to call me or call anyone at the shelter and ask that. So what do you picture doing with your pet? If you picture, you know, um, camping with your pet, then I'm not gonna recommend a guinea pig. If you picture um, that you want to uh, travel a lot, then uh, you may not want to get a dog unless you have a second person who wants to share the care of the dog while you're out of town. But it's all things that we can talk to you about because the realities of caring for an animal often do not match what you pictured. And we would love to talk to you about that before you choose to make sure that uh, your picture's realistic. And if you have lots of pet experience, then you don't need our help with that at all. You can come to the shelter anytime we're open, fall in love with the animal of your dreams, and uh, let us help you schedule the neutering and the adoption meeting so you can take them home. We are back with Izzy. And Izzy is a year old, and to tug on your heartstrings a little bit, it's hard for cats that are year old to get adopted during kitten season. I should say harder. Uh, they certainly do find homes, but the reason is because there's plenty of beautiful kittens bouncing around and people decide that they either want a middle-aged cat, five or six years old, um, or they want to go ahead and get a kitten. It's the teenagery kittens like Izzy that um, are overlooked, and as you can see, there's a lot of advantages to going this way. She's still a kitten. She still has her whole life ahead of her. She can still learn anything you need her to learn. Not that old cats can't. Um, and she's making biscuits and wants to be on Randy's lap. She knows how to get in the carrier and ride along. So there's a lot of advantages to getting a cat with a little bit more experience than a kitten. She's also going to uh, settle in at home a little faster. She'll be past the stage, is past the stage, of uh, stealing your earbuds and knocking things off the bookshelf at night to see if you'll wake up. So um, if you've been thinking about getting a cat, we're gonna uh, say the same thing we did with Grace the dog. There are advantages if it's your first cat to not starting with a baby one who has a lot of needs you might not know about. Certainly, there's nothing wrong with taking on the challenge of a puppy or kitten if you're ready and if you're willing to um, hear from us that um, one in 10 of uh, puppies and kittens gets uh, given away within short order um, if they're adopted from a shelter. So, and that's nationwide, not just here. So out of every 10 adoptions that happen in animal shelters, one of those comes back to the animal shelter either for a mismatch of animal and person, which does happen, or for um, family crisis, the same family crisis that lands animals here in the first place if they weren't adopted from here. So just encourage you to think seriously about getting a pet before you do it because there is a chance that it won't work out and you need to make sure that you are prepared for what you will do if, what you will do if you don't think it can work out. Thank you for joining us on Pet Pals, and uh, I hope I see you next time. If you have any interest in any of the animals that you have seen on the show today, come in and meet them. If you know of anyone who might be interested, then uh, go to our Facebook page, share them on social networking, or go to Pet Tango and print their profiles out and share them anywhere you can. We appreciate all the help we can get. You guys have been great in getting the word out. And, um, and keep it up, and hopefully we'll find homes for all of these guys in no time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.